Hey everyone, it's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and today I'm going to talk about the iFi Zen Air Deck. This is a $100 deck. Uh, it has a headphone amp, and that's why I got really excited about it, because at $100, this is honestly what most, all of what most people need. And that's kind of going to be a gray area, but depending on how much you're spending on headphones, what you listen to, and what your power requirements are, you don't necessarily need to go into the $200, $500, or $1,000 plus amp DAC setup. So... I like the premise of this being a $100 all-in-one unit for headphones. Doesn't necessarily mean necessarily mean it's going to sound incredible, but that's what we cover in this review. So uh, this was sent to me from iFi uh, because the channel has been growing thanks to all of your support. Um, more audio brands are reaching out and working with me, so I'm really excited and thankful that they sent this out. It will not change how this review is structured or what I have to say about it. I always try to be honest because... That's much better for the long-term uh, <laughs> growth of the channel. So uh, if at the end of this review you do think this is the right DAC slash headphone amp for you, I will have a link in the description below to purchase it. It's a generic Amazon affiliate link. Nothing special set up with iFi, and iFi hasn't seen this review prior to going live. So uh, anyway, with that being said, let's dive in. We'll start talking about features and what you get, and then discuss what my thoughts and experiences are. Now, you might be wondering why I'm holding a canvas bag instead of the deck, and that is because I love the form factor of this. Um, I'm a huge audio nut, if you can't tell with the channel, and I like to show friends and family uh, what I have for gear sometimes, do audio demos, help them kind of understand audio, and help them find the stuff that they want to get. So I bought this bag. This is from a company called Peak Design. It's like a $50 bag, a little overpriced, but I wanted something of high quality. And if you can see from up top, it holds tons of cables. This is called the tech bag. So I got all my headphone cables, but when I'm traveling, I even though I love some of my larger headphone amps, they're just too big and bulky to travel with. And this can still get the job done in a lot of cases for showing you the differences of headphones. And my Zen, DAC, my Zen Air DAC fits perfectly in here, and all you need is a USB cable. No external power supply. Now, it does come with this little adapter. This is a, a uh, sorry USB to a barrel connector. It's a five volt extra power source for the, the DAC. It's not required to run. You only need to use that if for some reason your USB source doesn't have enough power to turn this on or run it. So it's cool that they give you this cable. It's extremely short, but they give it to you. Um, it also comes with a blue USB cable, also extremely short. That was one of my only gripes was the length of it because if I have this setting on my desk for a desktop, it was too short to reach my computer that was under the desk. I had to use my own USB cable. Now, I got one of the launch versions of the Air DAC, so my USB cable was defective from the company, and they knew that was an issue. They, you know, they would have offered to replace it. I just didn't need it because it was too short anyway. Um, that's since been fixed, but if you see any reviews online of the cable getting stuck or defective, that was just on the launch. It's been fixed since then. Because mine got stuck and I finally removed it, I tossed the cable. <laughs> I don't want to accidentally plug it into something else one day, but it's blue and it's short. Any USB A to B cable will work just fine. You don't need to buy any fancy shielded stuff. It's just data and you're good to go there. Um, so just focusing in on the back, I already mentioned the extra barrel connector. I mentioned the USB and you have RCAs. Now these are RCA outputs because you can use this as a DAC of course with analog out. So if you're not using this to power headphones or you want to use another amp to power headphones or a two channel amplifier, whatever it may be, you'll connect it to that. Now with that being said, that means this also does not have an analog input. So this DAC is solely a USB DAC that happens to have an aux out and a headphone jack, which takes me to the front of the unit. Now the front of it has two buttons on the outside. The left one is your power match. Basically just think of that as a high low gain setting. A little more sophisticated than that with the way they designed it, but turn power match off if you're using IEMs or in-ear monitors, the little earbuds. And pretty much if you have any other, any other headphone, just turn it on and get the extra overhead. This isn't like a crazy powerful amp, so you can get away with leaving it on. Now the button on the right is X bass. That is like a massive bass boost. You're talking uh, like a 10 decibel shelf that lifts up your bass and it's focused at 20 hertz. So if you're worried about uh, headphone roll off, and I actually have a couple headphones here that I like for different music. Um, they have different characteristics, of course. This is a much less expensive $200 Sennheiser HD 560S. This is the Hi-Fi-Man Aria Stealth, um, closer to 2000, closer to 200. So um, big difference in price, and this powered them both, no problem. Now, Planars sound nice, and I guess it's a matter of preference. Some people like different types of headphone sounds. 
but I do find that sometimes with this plan R and the 560S, I just want a little bit more bass. So I turn on the X bass and all of a sudden these things just have tons of it. In some cases it could be too much, but luckily you can turn that off and have a nice flat sound. On headphones like my Sivga Robin, the, the SV021, that thing is already bass heavy. So it was way too much with bass boosts on. So again, it's just one of those things where if you need to lift your bass, it does that. Now the roll off of the bass um, starts happening pretty quickly after the 20 hertz bump. It's not like there's zero bass boost at 50 hertz, for example, but the way they roll it off is nice and gentle and it doesn't bleed into the upper bass low mid range. So it's not actually coloring your sound much at all, which I like, meaning that your mid range still st stay true to the way they sound. So the tonality of the amp DAC in this case is actually still very clean. Now, iFi rates this at 230 milliwatts at 32 ohms and roughly 36 milliwatts at 300 ohms. So depending on your headphone and sensitivity, this can power most headphones to an enjoyable listening level. Obviously, if you get into higher impedance, low sensitivity headphones, you may find that you need just a little bit more juice to get the most out of it. I couldn't stay at the 80 plus percent mark or close to full volume on the Aria Stealth. Those are 32 ohm headphones and when I cranked it, it can get uncomfortably loud. That's why I know I can travel with this because when you're doing an audio demo, you're not just trying to blow up someone's eardrum, you're gonna play music for a while. So again, I love the way that this thing provides such a clean and powerful enough output to cover a lot of things. Now, I'm gonna be honest and nitpick something. So here's the stock cable that comes with the Aria Stealth. Nice, simple, black quarter inch cable. And when you plug it in, you will notice it is very close to the volume knob, and I'm not sure why, because this is actually a pretty wide unit. It's very similar to their Zendax and uh, Air, Air Can signatures, you know, the metal enclosures and everything, well, basically all of the iFi design language. But w for some reason with this one, when you adjust the volume, it's so close that your hand kind of hits the headphone cable when it's plugged in. Now, this is a, a gentle enough feedback where I can easily operate this with one finger, which is what I typically do. Um, but I do want to point out if someone, if you're more of the person that wants to grab the knob and twist it, um, you may find that frustrating. Uh, again, I don't adjust in massive swings repeatedly, so to me it was fine, but it's just odd because you could have easily put a button between the headphone jack and flip-flop these and had a much more usable front. Now on the front left you have a kilohertz label. There is a LED that lights up and changes colors depending on your bit rate or sample rate, sorry, that you're running. This has built-in MQA decoding, so if you are looking for an affordable MQA decoder to get the most out of your title um, membership, you can do that. Now, MQA is a heated discussion as it is, whether it's good or not, or some people are like it. They're not forcing you to use MQA. By having MQA, it's not making everything else sound worse. You can turn it on and off. That leads me into the firmware. So the firmware actually, uh, there were some a couple updates since launch, and I'm running 7.4C. Now they give you the options of 7.4A, B, and C. It did fix my latency issues. I had an issue before on the original firmware where if I had no music playing, then I hit play, it'd be like a full second or so before I would hear the music. It was in sync with what I was playing. I just missed the first second of the song, if that makes sense. So. It was still fine for gaming because once the audio came in, I had no latency issues. There was just that odd pause in the beginning. Now, since I flashed to firmware 7.4C, all of that's gone. All of 7.4 should fix that audio drop issues. The difference with A, B, and C is A is basically just a new version of what it comes with that fixes some bugs. 7.4B removes the MQA decoding support, and 7.4C gives you what's called a GTO filter. That's the iFi's little proprietary filtering system. And I flashed it to GTO because I wanted to hear the difference. And this is really subtle stuff, but ultimately I like the GTO sound. I think it's fast um, and it's clean. I've seen measurements of this. I don't have the equipment to properly measure the output performance and how flat or measure Synad and all that. But this thing measures like perfectly flat from 20 to 20K. So if you're trying to just get an amp that's nice and clean, so you can experiment more with your headphones or EQ and DSP. You can do all that with this and you don't have to worry about the amp coloring your sound, which is I think what most people want. 
especially if you're only buying one device. Now to keep the cost down, and unlike the Zendak Signature, this is an all plastic ABS enclosure. It's textured, which I actually like because I think it hides fingerprints better and it might even hide scratches better. I try to take care of my stuff so nothing gets damaged. It has these little rubber feet on the bottom. So it's solid. It doesn't feel cheap just because it's $100. I think they balanced it out. Surprisingly, there's still a decent amount of heft to this considering it's an all plastic enclosure. The volume knob is analog, it's not digital, hooray for that. And they use aluminum on the volume knob, which was smart because one of the things you're gonna to touch the most is the knob, so at least they gave you some premium material there. Now on high gain, just when you first start turning up the volume knob, there is a slight channel imbalance. My particular unit favored the right by a couple decibels, but once you start turning it up, that'll balance out. The channel imbalance doesn't persist. It's typical with pots like this. Um, and especially in the lower price point at the lowest possible volume setting. If you want to listen to it at a lower volume and that bothers you, just turn off power match so you can turn the pot up higher or the volume knob and that'll eliminate your channel, channel imbalance issue. So overall though, it performed extremely well. As far as music listening goes, look, I'm gonna keep it straight. Um, in a lot of cases, some people are totally fine just using an Apple deck. You know, just a little $10 USB deck just to clean up the power a little bit. They don't give you enough power for certain headphones like this, and they don't have a nice volume knob. The interface isn't quite the same. So to me, this is a nice step up without going premium because you know, when you connect this to let's say a desktop or a laptop, especially on the Windows side, um, they have pretty terrible decks. And it's apparent when you use even a $100, $150 headphone will not sound as good as it does when you put it on something like this. It's not like you have to spend thousands to get an improvement in sound just by upgrading your DAC. You are freeing yourself from a lot of interference and noise and hums, uh, poor dynamic range. It's just very common be because the motherboards, they're trying to build it more for the processor and all your other parts and not for premium audio quality. Now I use a Gigabyte Aorus Master 570, an X570 motherboard, which even says it has premium audio you know, guts, if you will. I'm, I'm keeping this simple for the sake of the review. Um, there was still a massive improvement in sound quality switching to this, even on a more expensive motherboard, not only in cleanliness, but of course, your power boost. So um, I don't want to treat this as this is like the ultimate audiophile product because there's more expensive stuff out there. But I think this is a big tangible upgrade for someone who just wants a very simple solution to a very common problem. And that's the, the debate of using onboard audio on a computer versus buying a full expensive stack. This fills that little gap really, really well. And audio performance was great because of it. Um, Muse just came out with his new album, uh, The Will of the People. And there's this song, Verona. I think it's like second or third to last song on the album, or third to last song on the album. Um, it sounds amazing. I actually got like Daft Punk Tron vibes. And because this is so smooth, I can listen to this on everything every single headphone I own, and it would keep up and drive them no problem. Got excellent separation, you know, it's not holding back or ruining the song, it's just very transparent sounding amp. But because of that bass boost, um, the X bass, on bass light headphones, I can still benefit from the openness and airiness of something like the 560S, which is an incredible headphone under $200. And if I just need a little bit more impact down low for when the music picks up halfway through the song, this just does that so effortlessly and smoothly, and it's not ruining the synth and the vocals in the mid-range. I preserve what makes that song sound so spacious and incredible, but now I get a little bit more uh, visceralness to the song. So to me, I think this is uh, an excellent either starting point or just really all you need, depending on your setup, to get a great listening experience at home or on the go because it can be USB powered. I do want to say if you do, just in case, um, from an operational standpoint, if you do plug a headphone in up front, it does not disable your pre-out. So if you're concerned about that, you know, you might have to just turn off your amp. In case you don't like turning things on and off, they will both send the signal out simultaneously. And your power match setting does affect the pre-out. So if you are noticing that you have to turn your amp up a lot more than you expected to, you may have your power match turned off. Just turn it on and you step up to just over three volts on the output. With it off, it caps out at one volt. So um, I love this thing. It's not trying to be anything crazy. It's not priced to be anything crazy. And I think it's the, the a worthwhile upgrade from almost every single computer setup. Even on my 16-inch MacBook Pro, the new ones that came out, they advertise having a higher quality headphone amp, even for higher impedance headphones. And this was still a noticeable improvement for that. 
So whether you have a cheap computer or a more expensive machine, um, this is still going to be a worthwhile upgrade. And, and that's through trying a lot of headphones. I've had this for a couple months and I've used it a ton. Um, but I, I love this thing. So anyway, hopefully it's the right one for you. If this is not enough power, the 230 millivolts is not enough or milliwatts is not enough for some people. I have more higher end stuff from iFi coming out shortly as far as review goes if you need more juice. Um, but yeah, overall, I love the package. I think it's a good balance of having high quality deck, build quality features, and sound quality. So anyway, I hope you found this review helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. As I said, I have more stuff coming out from iFi, and I'm going to talk about the 560S soon. Uh, I appreciate all the support you guys and gals have given me. With that being said, I will see you next time. Bye.